this. It, that's read into a microcontroller. No matter what you do, you're going to have to go through a microcontroller of some kind. Um, now, I think what, what, we're, what you're meaning there is I, I would then send, this is the sensor, which is monitoring, say, the wind speed and the wind direction. It's sending the data via radio or via a wire to maybe another monitoring unit. And, uh, and so each one of those could have a microcontroller in doing something, or you could, you could connect directly to a computer. Um, but I see that the, the little unit that's sending the data, so we could have a data by a, a sense, sorry, a unit, a data logging unit by the wind turbine, which sends wind speed and wind direction. There is another one near to the electrical installation, which monitors AC current and AC voltage. That one receives the data from the, and the wind speed and wind direction data by a radio link, and then it maybe uploads because it's near, it's inside the building. It can upload data maybe with uh, Ethernet. Or, so what I'm trying to show here is that there's there's millions of options we could do. There's no right or wrong one. It will all depend upon the application. So um, I think uh, this microcontroller here, what you can do is actually you could say that. You can use the same diagram, but put that there, and it's then talking to different things. So that's that's maybe what I'm trying to show with this line here that we talked about. That. And you, you, in some case, you can extend the the explanation because if tomorrow you want to, for example, monitor your tower for in the uh, some. For wind center, a second here because it's, uh, inside it's more simple. And for example, your uh, the person wants uh, why not a display in uh, another room? It's not really simple to put cable uh, um, on the each, uh, and, uh, between each module, and you can add another on this uh, radio network. Wow. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, a good point. Um, if you have a radio network, then we could actually have, uh, maybe there are three locations that you're interested in, what the wind speed is. You could put a little unit which is sending the data as a radio frequency, um, radio communications. You have one monitoring unit which is getting all of that data and you can then compare the different sites that you're, the, the different locations that you're, uh, you're looking at. For example, this is a display, and uh, he collects data from radio, and just he, he displays it. But you can imagine the, now the same with a uh, like a more big screen on a more shiny display for for uh, uh, connectivity or other. Uh, Education or where on other. So uh, I mean, what I really wanted to kind of cover here was um, different types of radio communication and their advantages and disadvantage and um, disadvantages. Um, so and then different types of uh, Wi-Fi connector and their advantages and disadvantages. Ethernet connections, their advantages and disadvantages. Um, do you um, and I, I see this as a module that you add on depending on the application. Um, what are the disadvantages of, before we go into the depths of the available radio transmitters and receivers, what are the general disadvantages? That's a good, good point. So, uh, disadvantages are um, uh, power consumption. Um, the range, uh, or that kind of links with errors. So um, as soon as you turn something, a signal that would have been on a wire into a, um, a radio communication, 
that might be blocked by some for some reason. So we were testing some radio transmitters uh, yesterday, and if you could go maybe five or six meters, um, and then they would stop working. And if someone walked in the way, they would you would lose data. So if that was a wire, obviously that wouldn't happen. So um, yeah, you they are prone to more error, and they consume power. Uh, from any, this any? you can have an uh, tip on from a different module. But. Yeah, so yeah, for, for the errors you could either use um, a module which has a longer range, you can also use error checking, so yeah. if there is an error you get rid of that data. Um, so you, you can do clever things, um, I mean we all use, well a lot of people use Wi-Fi which is a wireless network, it's a radio frequency communication and Obviously, it's very. We think it's quite reliable, um, and we can get lots of good data from it. But um, so we use it quite a lot. But um, you do have to think about uh, the errors that could happen. Uh, I don't know any other. What else? Oh, um, another problem could be that if it's sensitive data, um, security. Yeah. Someone could listen into your data. If it's a wire, you have to physically tap the wire. If it's radio waves, anyone can listen to what you're saying. Really, I don't think For many of us mind about that. Yeah. yeah, so it's not, but potentially if you've got some commercially sensitive data, so your wind turbine man generation is being sent to everyone, um, that might be, someone might want to know that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, so there's a, a slight security issue. Um, I, yeah, I don't think we're too worried about that. But, uh, I mean, another side of that is that someone could maybe use the radio connection to hijack your data logger and break it for some reason. I don't know. Why doesn't that happen with Wi-Fi? It could do. We've got encryption on Wi-Fi and... Uh, security aspects of Wi-Fi are a huge topic that people have big discussions and people are very into uh, the, the so WPA, the different protocols for doing security on Wi-Fi um, are interesting and there's holes in those and people exploit them all the time. Um, any other problems? Oh, cost. Mm -hmm. Cost. But um, where your connection? Can yeah, it, there's a point where radio can be cheaper than a wire mm -hmm. at a distance. Uh, the installation of a wire is a hassle and it may be expensive. Five, five meters is not too much. No, five <laughs> meters. I don't think five meters really justifies the cost of uh, things. But uh. ah. I don't think I have any. No. So, um, there are quite a lot of little radio modules um, on the market. There are a few things to think about. The, the frequency, um, is interesting because uh, there are certain bands which have been allocated for people to do to send data for these kind of modules, and um, those bands are different in different parts of the world, in different countries. So there are European-wide kind of bits of frequency, so bands of frequencies which we can use. Um, there's ones that maybe in the UK uh, you're not allowed to send data. Maybe in in France there are I think there are different bands even. Within countries, um, yeah, the US and Europe are quite different bands that they use. Um, so that could be a problem. Um, compatibility or making sure that your unit will is legal to be used in another country. Um, but uh, on this question, I think um, when um, just we decide what we some for. A lot of modules exist for each part of the planet. Um, sometimes, person uh, 
big module which uh, differs frequency. Mm -hmm. and you can you can just change the frequency or yeah, you change or the module. Change the module. Yeah, yeah it's uh, simple. So, uh, for example, Open Energy Monitor, um, they use a radio module and uh, they actually have three different versions and you, uh, you can buy a, the system with a different module depending on what location you're in and uh, you, you just put a tick on which one it is and you can just change that. It's the same thing, it's just designed for different units but different places. Um, the frequency also affects how far the data can go and how the data is absorbed. So high frequencies are absorbed by lots of things, so walls and people and trees. So Wi-Fi doesn't go very far because the frequency it is, it's very high frequency, it's 2.4 gigahertz, I think. And um, that actually is quite easily stopped by a house brick. That's actually very it's blocked by a house brick quite easily. Um, and that can affect the range that you get. Um, if you go to lower frequencies, they can generally go further. But uh, is the data rate different? Maybe not. To no. To say it's different. Absurd. The to say it's absurd. Ah, uh, okay, yes. Yeah, so the antenna might have to be really long. For very low frequencies, you'd have to have a really big antenna. If you use a really low frequency, you can send uh, a lot of data by a second, for example. Ah, uh, okay. just, you just change it. Yeah, because uh, well, you can cons uh, up to the well, just uh, the flow of data. Yeah. It depends okay, on the so system, yeah. how it works, if, how it is modulated on the frequency, if it's just you know, sort of pulse, or if it's, I don't know how it, how it actually works with this kind of data transfer. Yeah, so it, it actually the frequency of the transmission doesn't affect the data rate. They're, they're two separate things, I think is what we're talking about. But um, yeah, so in actual fact, this one here is, um, this has an, uh, the, um, the red wire as the antenna and it actually says this is for 433 megahertz, this is 165 millimeters, but for 868 megahertz, you just need an 82 millimeter antenna, which would be half the size. Um, so so yeah. what does the frequency tell about the antenna length? Is it just uh, half the... Um, I don't know the exact. It's, uh, it's a quarter wavelength, or yeah, it's a quarter wavelength. Order of order of magnitude. Order of same order of magnitude. Okay. The way. Relative to the one meter long. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Hope RF, the manufacturer of the board. Uh, 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 no, um, it's a uh, low cost, um, little um, wireless board for sending um, data. I can't remember. There is a, a good review of uh, advantages and disadvantages on a link that I will link to somehow through this. Um, what else do we have? Um, we were looking yesterday at uh, um, XB. Um, and uh, I've used before a thing called the XRF. I think there are lots of others. I don't know if anyone... Does anyone know any others? I mean, there's, there's things like um, for uh, radio control stuff, so for radio control models, there's um, little transmitters and receivers, um, and they're probably available in loads of different flavors. Uh, so I think one of the jobs for Tarsus for the future, as John's just written down, is um, reviewing what we could do here and, and how much it costs and how available it is what frequencies in which countries. Uh, so um, yeah. Wi-Fi, we have a similar kind of um, list of things. So Wi-Fi, uh, there's a few that I know of. There is the Wi-Fly uh, module, which is from uh, MicroH. Uh, called roving networks. There is uh, the ESP8266, which is um, so. This is uh, this is the Wi-Fi module. So that can connect to a Wi-Fi network, but you do have to set this up correctly. So if you're going to use Wi-Fi, you have to know the SSID, the ID of the network, and you also have to know the password. With radio communication, you probably don't have to do that. You can just chuck out your data and listen for it. Whereas with Wi-Fi, you actually have to make a connection with the network. So it's much more complicated. It's much more uh, computational power intensive. So you need to do a few things. But the, uh, and then yeah, this, this little one here is um, the ESP8266, which is very cheap. Yeah, it's like five euros. Uh, five or three six, point five euros. Three point five euros. But um, the documentation is uh, it's mainly in Chinese, and it's being kind of worked on at the moment. Lots of people are using this, but it's not reliable. We we tried to use it. And yeah. I we tried, but we do. Yeah, we've not managed to make it but, connect. Uh, to... I just I see yesterday. Uh, now you have new frame, firmware on new version, but we need to make new tests. Yeah. So uh, so this is more complicated, and and might include if you want something that just works straight away. Maybe this isn't a good solution, but. It's quite nice because it misses out any receiver units. You don't need to have another one to receive the data to then send it. So. But after you can use an older module, but it's uh, expensive. Mm. To have from yeah. Yeah, so this, the, the Y Fly module, the Roaming Next works, this one was about 40 euros, it's about 30 quid. Um, so that's another thing to kind of review, it's one of the tasks. And also just setting up tests to get them to work. So um, the other way you could do it is if you, um, if you wanted to connect a proper wire to your, to your router, to, to actual ethernet connection, you can get these little conversion boards, which you can send serial data, so quite simple communication data, and you can um, that can be sent directly to your router, which would send it to the 
internet to keep the worldwide data repository. Um, these things are quite cheap. I think this was about 10 euros, uh, and that was a few years ago. Um, but again, you need to you need to have send more commands to make this work. You need to tell it how it's going to connect, and it needs to do lots more things. Um, I don't know the names of any of these, actually. When you say it's more computationally intensive to use Wi-Fi stuff, is that just initially, once you're setting up the link between you and the network, or is it constantly uses more um, It depends. Uh, I think, actually, constantly, because if you're setting up a direct connection using Wi-Fi, you are having to send HTTP requests direct to the internet, which is a, quite a long string. So the Open Energy Monitor sends a simple text string, which is then converted into an HTTP request by your local, local logger. Yeah. Um, and that HTTP request is uh, quite a long string, or it's a bit longer. And maybe that's more than, say, an Arduino could actually cope with. Probably not, it's probably okay, but... Yeah, you can send directly. You could send directly, yeah. yeah. But it, it uses more memory, so... Yeah, but the, because in an open energy monitor system, they use a low-part server uh, on the Raspberry mm. to collect all data on the... the you can uh, send on the internet and copy, the, uh, copy of the data. But it's uh, why they have uh, always uh, uh, they send always a, a short uh, sentence because the uh, the Raspberry does the uh, the Raspberry make the the HTTP request. Yes, yeah. So um, yeah, in Open Energy Monitor, you this is a Raspberry Pi, and that adds on all the bits it needs to send an HTTP request. If you were going to do that directly, you would have to send the HTTP request here, and that would have to go through your network. You can do it, but it means more on your microcontroller. Um, you could do it this way, that uh, you have another microcontroller that just does the HTTP request, and this just does the data collection. Then you can have two units dedicated to their function, which is basically what this is, so, or, uh, or the Wi-Fi module is basically a microcontroller dedicated to dealing with that HTTP request. Uh, so Ethernet, there are modules available. Based on the wavelength of the transmission, and given that Wi-Fi is a fixed wavelength, then is it possible to have any kind of stronger Wi-Fi transmission that goes further, or is the fundamental physical limit on how far you can possibly transmit it if you put in a gigawatt of power transmitting it? No, there there are two limits. The frequency depends upon the absorption of stuff. So the frequency will affect the absorption of stuff and the power level will actually affect how far it goes. So Wi-Fi doesn't go that far because it's generally absorbed and also they, they have limits on the power you send and that is to do with um, standards, international standards on if everyone was just blasting radio waves everywhere then no one else could use anything. So they limit um, with standards uh, the amount of power you can receive and send information. You can change that, so there are the different standards, the, the letter after your Wi-Fi thing, that is a different power transmission, I think. Um, and, um, and things like the XB we were using yesterday, you can send uh, 10 milliwatts, you can send 20 milliwatts, you can send 60 milliwatts, so you can adjust the power level depending upon the power consumption you want and the distance you want it to go. So, as a rough indication of what's the maximum distance you have possibly sending on my Wi-Fi, there's nothing in between you have maximum power. I don't know. You'd have to. Uh, 
I've seen people who have been sending data with, uh, with Wi-Fi, with like um, a cantenna, yeah, if you, and they can go a long, a long way, you know, hundreds of meters. But it's very directed. Yeah, yeah, so you have to set it up very well. So it's, it's a difficult thing to answer because it depends on the wind, it depends on the lots of things. So, yes, yeah, so you could have a different antenna with a directional, so it power, rather than sending the data all in a blast everywhere, it's sending it very locally in, in, in one direction. And also on the other end, the receiver can be very focused. Yeah. So you, you can get quite long distances. Yeah, I've been thinking with the man who set the antenna last day. Yeah, oh yeah. He was thinking about Wi Fi and internet sometimes, and it took me like maybe 20 kilometers. Wow. Yeah, but it's, it's wow. a little antenna. Yeah, but it's a rubber across. That's the maximum anyone's yeah. done. <laughs> okay. And this is one of the better ones. <laughs> they weren't streaming YouTube through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's difficult to talk about um, a very definite range. I think what we need to do is do some tests with all of this. I think we need to do some tests with um, exactly, uh, in a real environment, how, how we would, how far we'd send it. It is not the same problem with the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet for the data, uh, the speed and the... Um, the quantity of data it is not a problem with uh, but with the protocol um, to, to transmit on internet it is the same for Wi-Fi and Ethernet, no? Yes, that's yeah. so. So the protocol here is the same. Is that what you? <laughs> 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 No, no one. There's no myself. one there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, can, can uh, do it. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, I, yeah, I think actually, um, if I could possibly put a wire in, yeah. I would. Yeah. yeah, because in actual fact, I think maybe maybe you're right. Um, all of this with wires to an Ethernet connection with wire yeah. direct to your router. There's no Raspberry Pi. There's no yeah. additional. That's probably the best solution or the, the lowest power. Solution. Yeah. The other thing with um, okay. the Raspberry Pi, having a Raspberry Pi is good because this can store a local copy of the data. And if this connection here goes, there's a problem with this connection, the Raspberry Pi can store the data until the connection comes back and then it will send all the data. Whereas that's quite hard to do here, there's not much memory here to do that. Yeah, that's right, so an SD card, 
No, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying, but the microcontroller can only actually, they're limited. You, you're right, you could program a microcontroller to do that. But if we're talking about the Arduino, the Arduino has two kilobytes of RAM and putting that, say it's been off for three days and you have, um, you know, I don't know, a gigabyte of data. Um, that would then have to be taken in two kilobyte chunks into here. And it's not even two kilobytes because that's the maximum memory. So you could then send it, but it would take hours. And that would take lots of programming here. Um, it, yeah, uh, this, the cheapest and one of the simplest solutions is the Raspberry Pi if you have power available. What's the power. price for the Raspberry Pi? About thirty euros. Which one do you got? It's a new version. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah. I mean, it, it's very cheap. How much power does it have? It. When, raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. So, uh, um, ten watts. Ten watts. Yeah. Uh, five, five to ten watts, I think. Okay. So it's uh, it's actually runs at five volts, and it takes about um, up to maybe one amp. So maybe five watts. Okay. Sometimes when the Wi-Fi is going a bit more, maybe up to two amps. So yeah, five to ten watts. Yes. If it's running on all the time. Yeah. It takes about five watts all the time, which is. On a small off-grid system, too much, I think. Um, so, the Raspberry Pi is not designed for low power consumption. There are better solutions that are designed for low power consumption. Mm -hmm. Can you? They've made it better. Yeah. They, yeah, they've looked at that. No, um, oh, oh. in one watt. Yeah. One watt. One watt. Um, is that all the time? So, what if it's Wi-Fi connected? This is if you put it into low power mode. Yeah. I think you have to then put it sleep and then it wakes up. Yeah, but uh, if we just connect data each yeah. 10 minutes, yeah. for example, or each minute, you then you could get to this. Or yeah. yeah, so every so often you turn on and it's 5 watts, then you go back to sleep mm -hmm. again, or low, low power mode. So. Yeah, I didn't realize they, they made it. Um. But maybe if you compare that to the uh, an Arduino running, um, an Arduino running normally is five times 0.02, okay. um, so it's uh, about 0 0.1 watts, and in sleep mode it's five volts times 0 0.01, uh, so it's about 0 0.01 uh, five watts. Zero. Zero. One more. Zero, zero. Zero, 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 zero. Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> I use a computer. <laughs> I don't do things like this. Multiplying numbers. So you know that it's it's you know ten times more power. So it's very yeah, I think for grid connected stuff, I think for grid connected stuff, Raspberry Pi is probably the best solution um, because it's cheap, it's a big user base, just like the Arduino. And nearly every project that's coming out that does this kind of thing is an Arduino connected to a Raspberry Pi. I mean, if you have it, it's I mean, the thing about the Raspberry Pi is it doesn't do any analog monitoring. So there's no analog data. So that's why you need some Arduino to measure your data. Because in, in reality, you could actually just take this, miss out all of this, and just go to a Raspberry Pi and send data. And people have done that. Yeah. Um, 
on the live venue, quick starter on Open Energy Model. Uh, oh, is that? They have made the board to put on Raspberry Pi. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is not so the, they've done a version three. So yeah, and they're. Is it finished the Kickstarter or still running? Yeah, it's finished. Just finished. Yeah. So they're again a very nice little package kit. Mm. And uh, for the Raspberry, you, uh, I, I know you have uh, a module for the Wi-Fi as the weights. Yeah. I mean, adding adding yeah, adding Wi-Fi to the Raspberry Pi. There's lots of modules, plug-in USB Wi-Fi. Um, costs a couple of euros, even five euros. Definitely, you get a nice Raspberry Pi um, Wi-Fi. But um, personally, uh, so there's, there's lots of solutions for grid-connected stuff. Um, I'm very interested. One, one of the systems we designed here was off-grid stuff. And I think we need, to, we need to have options which don't include some of this for off-grid monitoring. Um, so I think for grid-connected stuff, you know, generally you might have, and in, a, in a place which is quite developed, you know, where you've got Wi-Fi everywhere, um, you've got a nice phone line to every building, then yeah, use an Arduino and Raspberry Pi and don't need to worry about anything really. Um, but I think a lot of uh, Wind Empowerment members are in working in very remote places with no Wi-Fi, no grid, um, very low cost. Um, so even 30 euros would change the, the system, you might not be able to afford that. So we, we have to look at lots of other options rather than the kind of, well, it depends on your application, so. And uh, for uh, you, a lot of uh, European installation, you can find some things simply to plug on your grid on other, but when you are in a grid place, it's more complicated. It's more interesting to work on. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you could buy off-the-shelf power monitors for, you know, you could go into a shop here and we could buy a power, um, an energy monitor we can plug in and see the data online, but it's not available everywhere. So I think this project is interesting because we can do that, but we can also look at more remote systems. <coughs> um, just, uh, again, there are modules which do uh, GPRS or um, GSM, so this is with, um, what did I say it was? General Satellite, what does GSM stand for? I should know. Mm -hmm. Satellite System for Gen Global System, system for, mobile for Mobile Communications. So it's what uh, mobile phones um, work on, um, and uh, you can get circuits which um, are like a little module, which is the same kind of thing as we were saying about the Wi-Fi modules. Um, this works like a mobile phone. You have to put a SIM card in it, so it has to have some data. Uh, it has to have a, a mobile phone contract, um, and you can send data to it and it will do all the communication here and it will transmit so you can get some quite nice aerials for things. But I think you can transmit data as far as you want. So long as there is a, a mobile phone network. This is, so this is what I'm very interested in because this is very remote monitoring with, with the same end result. The problem with this is that you have to have a data contract. So it costs more over time. So it, the, this kind of system will just work. Um, this you'll have to pay for all the time. And the distance to use the GPRS, it's, uh, it's uh, high, it's, it's, it's expensive. It's why the module is expensive. Mm. The module is expensive, the other module is expensive in it, or all module to use. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, this um, one. Or, this was about 20 euros. <laughs> it's not crazy, but um, this is a GPRS module from IT Studio. It's uh, there is a, a a company that makes a SimCom. They make the Sim 900, and most of these modules are based on the Sim 900. I yeah. think it's the same thing that was in the old Nokia phones. It's, it's the same thing. But if I think about the data that is transmitted via GPRS, it's, it's a very little amount, of, mm. small amount of data. It's only not, not much known, like downloading pictures or stuff. No, it's so just... It's, if, you, yeah, if you have one gigabyte, you can, it can last almost forever, I think. Uh, true, but generally mobile phone networks, you need... But you, um, can, you can get prepaid data. Yeah, yeah that would be perfect. That's, you yeah. can, in Austria, for example, we have prepaid data for five euros a gigabyte from some provider, so that would be the thing for that. Yeah, that would be perfect. There's, um, there's another project, uh, Kickstarter again, called the Connect Dash, which is um, a module like this, but it's very small. Uh, and it has a SIM card, and the SIM card is a global SIM, and it works in over 100 countries, which is 50% of the world. Um, and once you have a contract with them, uh, you could put it in, you could take them to all these countries, put them down, and they'll send data. So you could, I mean, that costs five, I think it's five dollars a month. So it's not the same as what you're talking about. The kind of, it would be best to have a, just a data contract that didn't run out. But the uh, the global sim that these people are talking about is is five euros uh, a month. But five euros a month to monitor your turbine might might be worth it. And also, you could take it to one place and then move it. You know, you. Um, in France, I use um, Freemobile. Freemobile. Okay. It's two euros by month, and you can um, have um, fifty megabytes. Of data on for monitoring your that's loads. Hmm? Yeah, that's loads. loads, yeah. Very cheap. Yeah. Oh, it's cheap. So um the, there are problems with um the data contracts will be different in every country and that can cause problems. So I've known of projects where they've designed and built something in the UK. Um, they've said, oh yeah, it works, it works in all these locations, it's great. Uh, and then they've sent them to a remote location and it doesn't work. Because the code that they've used to get it working... Yeah, to talk with the SIM card. Is, it doesn't work. In, yeah. So there are slight differences in every country with the SIM card. So that's why I quite like the global SIM, because once you've got it working, it will work in any country, I think. So what's about the coverage of the GPRS? For example, on Spark, you don't have 3G. Yeah, um, yeah for, for just on the yeah, but don't, don't need even have the 2G or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that is a problem, and that's a good point. Um, and obviously, very remote places, you won't be able to get a mobile phone network, Yeah. which is where you then have to... There's not many other options apart from storing the data locally. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> put two. Uh, yeah, yeah. Put, put two down. down. Put two uh, SD cards. Yeah, the satellite phone. True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheap. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Sorry. Can use radio. Yes. That's what Fernando does. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's he's sending data from park ranger cabins back to. Back to his kind of headquarters, or to the nearest place, and then transmitting by a more standard means of communication. Probably radio link to the nearest place that has the internet, and then sending yeah. that data back to him. So he's looking for weather data and other information about the forest and the Yeah. Yeah, so if you can set up a uh, a radio communications network, um, I know that Tom Dixon's been working on very long distance, very low data rate sending. So he's been sending data to from the UK to somewhere in Russia, I think, and you get maybe, you know, 100, 100 bytes an hour, but you can send it that far for very low power. So yeah, you, there are other ways. Um, so yeah. 
you you have the new, the new system, but it's in development. Well, it's true, but it's a uh, uh, Fox. Ah, uh, yes. But it's uh, use the radio. It's a but sick box. Like that? Uh, yeah. But uh, I don't know in uh, uh, if it's it be, I think you, you can technically you can use it in on all three uh, if you have a radio network. But I think they need to make contract with uh, all the uh, it's, it's extended. Starting yeah, it's a few years. I mean, um, there are other things. So the XB radio um, does a thing called a mesh network. You can get routers to do this, but it means that um, if you put, say, you've, you've got a couple of villages, you can put a few of these around, and they will talk to each other, and the data will get sent to the best connection, and then you can get sent somewhere. Which is the same as the radio connection you were talking about. Um, there's lots of options. Yeah, it's it's a trade-off. All, all of these things are a trade-off. I, I personally don't see any one winner here. I just see lots of options. And I think we may need to make things configurable so that we can use different options in different locations. Yeah, just uh, a lot of this. You use just an L, yeah. two, three, two. Um, uh, protocol yes. to talk a lot of so uh, just I think if we want to use uh, access to 3 2 protocol you just need to find a module compatible yeah. just so I think that's a very that's a very good point and yeah all, all of these units are generally using serial data on an RS232 signal. So I think that actually one decision we can maybe make about this project is that we say that this is RS232. It's um, with serial communication on it. Yeah, we decided something. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay! So, question, question, question. <laughs> No, there's lots of different modules. Um, so this is just one. There's, there's at least ten I know I've seen. I think you can uh, find and implement a lot of tests of each module. Yeah. And it's a work to just uh, look all on. Yeah. So choose on on try the the best. Yeah. So I'd say of all of these options, which we do a research of, we research the options and we choose two or three different ones mm -hmm. and we test them in real locations yeah. with, our, with our equipment and that will put us forward, further forward, which is what John's written up here, which is a to-do list and he's put on that, that, that exact idea. So. Um, so, Jilu has said a bit about uh, the Open Energy Monitor visualization. Um, so, we've kind of talked about how we get the data to here. Um, we've talked a little bit about this computer that we could have. Um, there are other uh, computers. There's the um, Beagle, uh, Beagle Bone. Beagle Bone. Yeah, Beagle Bone. Beagle Bone. Um, there's, there's maybe... 40 different little computers that you can get. I think now, now the bigger phone have uh, 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 an Atmega on. Ah, okay. And you can have uh, analog. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah, you yeah. can have a. So but it's. Uh, are you right? No, to the is software. On. You can it? make a lot of. Uh, uh, is it closed? Adam, but ah, it's closed. Uh, I, I, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about Yeah, so. I think the options there are, are um, there's many options there. The router we're not really we're, we're talking about using equipment that's already installed. And uh, I think the, probably the last thing to talk about now. Um, don't know what time it is. It's, it's What's the second radio thing on that? 
material is not connected, but it's got a microcontroller. So this is what uh, we were talking about before, what um, Jay was talking about, was uh, say we're trying to send data of our wind turbine, our wind speed and our rotational speed. That could be sent via radio connection to another microcontroller, which, so imagine that that is this, but this bit here is, yeah. is that. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes for an infinite loop. Um, but what it means is we could send data from a remote, uh, from the turbine, into the house where the microcontroller is, and then we also have these options. This has these options to be able to send data to the internet. Uh, okay. so, it's just another way of, of doing this, but the, the radio communications would be uh, the same. Um. Well, the program is not the price, it's a bigger bond. It's uh, around uh, uh, $90. Okay, so, yeah. But there are, I mean, uh, there are lots of options. Um, so visualization programs, so this is kind of, we've, we're sending this data into the ether, into the internet, and we obviously want to store that, and we also want to be able to see what it uh, looks like. Um, we would like that to be available probably on a mobile phone for maybe the consumer, the person that's had it installed. They want to go, oh, how much am I generating now? Uh, how much money have I made? Um, how much carbon have I offset, you know, depending on their thoughts. Um, or, yeah, maintenance, so for maybe for the more for the installers, you're looking at maintenance. Um, so these things are, you know, vital, really. Um, and there are lots of things, so Julia has gone through Open Energy Monitor. There are other companies doing uh, another open source projects doing the same thing. Um, ThingSpeak is one that comes up to mind. Um, there's a number of them. I did do a review of, of visualization programs a while ago um, to see which ones are out there. Some of which are a paid for service. Some of which you, you need to have a server and you install it on your own server. Um, open Energy Monitor is, is good because the way you talk to it is quite low. Um, it's not complex. It's yeah, very simple. Um, ThingSpeak is also quite uh, simple protocol. Some of them become, uh, depending on how wide they use, they, they become uh, harder, um, more complex. But um, I think this is also uh, a task to do, is to review the programs available here, yeah, and see you know which is most suitable. Um, yeah, on the, the yeah, we we need to work a lot on this way, but uh, on different ways. Uh, but for example, for this, I start to know the way, but uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah, uh, some. Uh, that is true. We we it takes a lot of effort to make the units work with these different programs. But so, for other, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same same thing. But maybe once we've got one thing working, we can use your expertise on that, and um, so it starts to mean that one of them is more suitable than others. Also, Open Energy Monitor have been very interested in this project. Tristan is probably watching this. I don't know if it's going on the internet, but um, yeah. So, so it's nice to have people that are interested in your project. So, and they are. So, so that is another positive. So, Tom from Jimber Thomas from the NTU, right? Oh yeah. So he's written in on the visualization thread on the forum, and he says that they've mostly been using SCADA applications. SCADA, okay. So, it's, it's serial control and automation, yeah. and later acquisition and automation. Yeah. Is it, is uh, yeah, it's what's it? Um, control and SCADA systems are designed for data monitoring and also controlling things. 
Ah, okay. Two rays. That way you can show the same thing you wind turbine. When yeah, when you when you're on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, I think so. SCADA systems are for monitoring and getting data and also controlling them would if you need to. Would it be possible with this kind of system that we also can have our smartphone and click on short circuit and have a related? That's, that's interesting. I, I've, got to, I've got to admit, I've been looking mainly at data flow from here yeah, of that way, but there's no reason. For I don't think any of these applications, there's no reason why we can't send data that way. Yeah. Um, it would, that would be a nice feature to have. The opportunity that we also have some output channel, channels where we can switch stuff and mm. maybe do something like this. Yeah, which is the difference between data, um, data acquisition and control. So it's a yeah. two-way thing. Um, yeah, that's another week of uh, hacking to get that going. <laughs> so we're, um, the point was raised that uh, we're talking about data going from here to here, but there's no reason why we can't send a little bit of data that yeah, way to sorry. control something here. Yeah. I would probably see that that we, we have another unit which listens to the same radio frequency and you have a different you have a protocol to say shut down and that gets sent and that gets transmitted and that little thing has a relay with it and it's been plugged in and it just goes clunk yeah. and does the control that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 but for, for turns off the electricity to the whole house. Yeah. 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 Oh because the for this, video, video. just we need to use a bidirectional yeah. protocol. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just that uh, you need to uh, yeah, we need to listen to well, we need to listen yeah. the serial phone. Yeah, so that the one of the issues with that is that listening on the serial ports it consumes more power. So if you have to keep on saying are you listening on the radio? So in this case you could turn on the radio only when you're sending data and that saves and then you turn it off when you're not doing anything. But if you wanted to send data that way Every so often, you would have to listen on the radio. Listen on the radio. That might might consume a bit more. Uh, you Not can have an, you have another way. You can uh, welcome to your module. Some ask a question. And uh, I need to I need to, I need to uh, switch off something. No. Okay. Yeah. Go sleep on after. So maybe every time you actually send data, you say, have you got anything for me? Yeah. You know, have you got any data? Um, that would mean that it's maybe not instantaneous. Yeah, but it's but actually like a cell phone, does it always, is on for a millisecond and then it's off for another second and then it's again yeah. and so on. And yeah. just this hard so say, sending to the yeah. base station. It's so just, it doesn't need much power. True. Yeah. But we do have to think about it. So yeah, sure. people, um, some things that people do, people, you know, you put an Arduino in. If you don't send an, well, if you don't send an Arduino to sleep, you actually on a battery-based system, you can consume quite a lot of current. So on a small solar battery system, and you plonk an Arduino on it, you know, yeah, you can start to consume quite a lot of power compared to what you're actually generating um, because it's running all the time. So one of the things I've looked at quite a lot is is putting the Arduino, the, the little microcontroller, the Atmel microcontroller, to sleep, um, and you go from running at 20 milliamps to running at 0 0.1 milliamps, or 1 or 2 milliamps. So, uh, things you can do, so... Yeah, to put your Arduino and... Yeah. It's easy to do, but... You have a lot of people. Yeah. But you, yeah, there's... It's things to think about, so it's... Uh, but I think 
forum and we need more. It's uh, we have one of what we want on the board, but the software is another part because uh, it's possible we build the board, we build the first version of the software. Uh, we can't put all the software on the board or all the board. We need to make revisions fast. If we want to make a lot of things, we need to just to think about uh, okay the length of code. What is it? Because uh, to send on the S two three two data is really simple. No, maybe, but this is really not of code but yeah, so, yeah, definitely the design of the software that does all this is another sheet of paper, really. Uh, the function to, to, to read the anemometer, that is a function. Um, the function to store data, uh, the function to send data. We can build the software as lots of little functions. And yeah, and uh, I see. Just we need to trickle after. Yeah, I think here we're looking at hardware. The software is great because anyone can have a go and play, and once they've got the hardware working, they can change the software as they like. Yeah. Which, um, which is the interesting thing for me. So, uh, but I think we we do need to think about this protocol, but maybe um, uh, maybe in a bit. I'm just, uh, I think maybe it's enough talking so I think people know. Yeah, we can make a break. Maybe we'll have a break and maybe we'll discuss it yeah. in a bit.